Thanks for checking out Scotty's Hobbies. Today we're going to be replacing the spark plugs on this 2007 Toyota Highlander. It's going to be real quick, real fast. Before we get going, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And as well, I'm going to tell you this too. The tools you need, torque specs uh, that you are going to be tightening everything to will be given throughout the video. Uh, it's going to be super helpful. So before we get going, I used a 16 millimeter spark plug socket with a magnet. There's going to be links in the description below to purchase everything that you uh, need to get this job done. 3 8 socket wrench. Uh, what is that? That's like a 6 inch extension with another 10 millimeter. 3 8 torque wrench. We're going to be torquing the spark plugs down. Make sure everything's tightened down properly. And of course, the spark plugs. You're gonna need those two. On this car, on Toyotas and Hondas, you always wanna use NGK spark plugs. Uh, NGK or Denso, I might, or I believe is possibly stock in this one too, but rule of thumb, all import of Hondas, Toyotas, make sure you do NGK spark plugs. Always the way to go. This one takes laser, iridium, of course, the most expensive ones that they had at the store. Hopefully you can see that. And part number? I doubt you're going to see it. What does it face look like? All right. Let's get going. We're getting started real fast. Get this job done as quick as possible. Give you a lot of info and tips and tricks and torque specs as we go. Set your magnetic cup off to the side. That thing right there is a time saver. Uh, you lose these bolts and nuts. They drop on the floor, roll around. This magnetic thing will save you time. Trust me. Remove the engine cover. Set it off to the side. Put it somewhere where you're not going to step on it or damage it or anything like that. These ignition coils have been removed before, and it is very notorious for the clips to break on the ignition coil connector, and we'll go over that later in the video. Remove all of these bolts that hold your ignition coils on. I'm using a 10 millimeter socket to remove. I'm going to do my best to do one coil at a time. So you really don't have to watch the whole video to get the vibe of what needs to be done. Uh, but it's best if you do, because I'm going to give you tips and tricks throughout the whole video. Remove these bolts, set them off to the side. I think I told you that, but do it again. If your connectors aren't broke, they're probably going to break if, you, if you're going to do this job, but uh, when you do remove the connectors, you want to make sure you grab the side of the actual wire connector and don't pull on the wires. I'll show you right here in just a second. You want to like squeeze the sides and wiggle up. Don't pull directly on the wire. Right there. And you push down on the clip and pull up. Not on the wires, though. Here, I'm going to loosen up all of the coils by pulling directly up or straight up to remove them off the spark plug. This one I'm going to have to disconnect because there's not enough leeway in the wiring harness to just let it set there or dangle on the wires. One of my favorite words, dangle. Be careful when you remove it. You can see, it. again, I'm pinching the sides of the connector and I'm pushing up on the connector rather than pulling on the wires. Might give yourself more problems that way. I do like to use dielectric grease when I'm reinstalling everything. I'll, throughout the video, I'll show you that too. Where to use it, how to use it, and maybe answer some questions for you. It is really important that you torque down everything when you reinstall all the parts and accessories on your engine. You don't want to over tighten something, especially the spark plugs and lose the threads. That is a whole nother task to feet. So don't get to that problem. I'm using a 16 millimeter spark plug socket that has a magnet in it. And I just wanted to show you if you had a five eighths spark plug socket, it does work. I don't see why it would be much of an issue. Uh, if you know why, make sure you comment below. And I do prefer using these spark plug sockets with magnets in them. It's a lot easier to remove the spark plug. If you need a spark plug socket set, make sure you look for a link in the description below to purchase that. Be helpful for me too if you do. Now let's remove the spark plug. It shouldn't be too hard to remove the spark plug. Uh, they are torqued down. Like I said, it's really important to properly torque these ones down. I do not use any type of anti-seize on the threads because I properly torque it down. Look it up, and if you do uh, choose to use anti-seize, more power to you. That's uh, your prerogative. 
But make sure you look up, uh, like, do some research on torquing down nuts and bolts with anti-seize. It changes the torque spec a little bit, I believe. These spark plugs are way overdue uh, for maintenance. The gap is huge on this. This could hugely affect the gas mileage and the power of the engine. You can see, compared to a new one, really, really bad. And you could read a lot about your engine when you change your spark plugs or how it's running. Now that you have the spark plug out, I like to look down in my spark plug hole, just see if there's any oil contamination getting down there. If it is, like this valve cover gasket, it's bad, it needs to be replaced. You also have the PCV valve right there on the top of the valve cover near or between the uh, firewall and the engine. I like to use a tight fitting or snug fitting hose on the spark plug to get it started and thread it in as much as possible. With this hose, if you start to cross thread it or anything like that, you are not going to do any damage to the engine. Unless you're like Hercules or something and you glue the hose on. But if it's hard, just reverse twist or like loosen it till you feel like the, uh, the threads catch. And then go back in the forward fashion and tighten it down until the hose spins on the spark plug. And then slap the torque wrench onto there and properly tighten it down. The torque specification on this vehicle is on one page it calls for 14 foot pounds and on the other page it calls for 13 foot pounds. That's pretty light, but that's torque spec. I personally torque these ones down to 15 foot pounds. It's a little bit tighter or a little bit uh, higher than what factory is, but I feel kind of safe. So that's personally what I did. I do use dielectric grease when I reconnect everything. And later on in the video, when we reconnect it all in at one time, I'll go over this again. But dielectric grease where the spark plug meets the coil and also put dielectric grease where your connection from your wiring harness to your coil is as well. Not too much, very little. I'll show you later on. Now that we have number one spark plug installed, let's move on to number two. Loosen it up using your 16 millimeter socket and your extension with your socket wrench and when you pull these spark plugs out you want to take a look at the tip always uh, take a look at every single one when you pull it out make sure it looks normal if it doesn't try to get a read of your engine so you can figure out what's going on why is this spark plug plug uh, looking the way it is and we'll go over a few things these ones the gap is huge uh, i already talked about that one so uh, this vehicle was sluggish. We thought there was like transmission problems or whatnot, but it ended up being the, the spark plug gap was giant. So this one was just lack of maintenance and somebody dropped the ball. Hmm. So let's say you pull your spark plug out and you have oil on the actual electrode or on the bottom side of the spark plug where it should be white. You have a bunch of oil right there. That could be caused by the uh, valve guides on the engine or the cylinders not properly sealing and getting blow by uh, getting oil into the combustion chamber somehow other than leaking down uh, the threats from the spark plug number two cylinder we're going to tighten it up again torque specification 14 millimeters on your 16 millimeter socket moving on to number three this job is really really quick uh, if you do this at home i think it took me about 40 minutes to do this whole job and that's including making the video, which adds a lot of time of getting the proper uh, lighting and camera shot and all that stuff. And you can see it's not even perfect as you're watching this. I'm doing my best, but it could be better, right? Number three spark plug. Go ahead, remove it. And something else. Let's say you pull out the spark plug and you have crust built up on it. It's light brown, uh, maybe like a, a dark white color. It just built up, a bunch of crust built up on it. That would be leaking or oil leaking into the combustion chamber uh, down the spark plug uh, threads. Or it could be more likely if you get cheap gas, a additive that a uh, gas station uses, or if you use a lot of additives in your fuel system, you could get a lot of a buildup on the spark plug as well. Tighten your number three spark plug down using the hose first and then the torque wrench. When you tighten up the bolts from the coil to the valve cover, uh, there's a proper torque specification on those as well. If you need a torque wrench or if you don't have a torque wrench, I get a lot of people saying that they don't use it in the comments, but I highly recommend it. 14 foot-pounds is not a lot, and you, again, don't want to pull the threads out. 
Number four spark plug. If you have a misfire too, so like a uh, 301, 302, 303, or 304, P0, 301, etc. Uh, I do have a couple of videos on diagnosing those issues as well. Uh, so check out those videos. Uh, if you do have a 304 or one of those misfire codes, this might be your fix. You might have to go more into replacing a coil like we had to on a previous video. You could see this number four coil uh, is new. And I have a video covering how we isolated that issue and figured that out. This spark plug looks pretty darn good other than the giant gap. Um, so it's really not that bad. And if you pull out the spark plugs and you get like a nice perfect tan grayish shade on the spark plug and you still have your electrode on there and everything, that's a good sign. That just means you're keeping up on your vehicle, uh, properly maintaining it probably. Or somebody else just spark plug, replaced the spark plugs and you forgot. <laughs> just kidding. Tighten your number four spark plug up. Torque it down. I think you know it. Do you know it? Hey, let me know below if you do. Also, let me know the year, make, model, vehicle, engine size of uh, the vehicle that you're working on that this video helps you out on. I was looking it up, and there is a ton of videos, sorry, ton of vehicles uh, this video is going to cover from Scion, uh, the Vibe, stuff like that. Here's my dielectric grease. You could buy a little... Uh, what is it like a little bag of it or you could get the bigger can I do a lot of tune-ups and stuff so I, I got this bigger can you could adjust the flow and the when you turn it off or on or let it flow with the handle on the side you want to put dielectric grease in there in the spark plug boot where the spark plugs gonna meet the coil and a little bit right here where the connector is going to meet the coil at the harness not too much you don't want it to like squirt out the sides when you push it in or make it harder to push in like make a, a hydro lock on it somehow uh, but just enough to keep moisture out and keep the electric connection pretty good water is the worst thing to allow in any wire connection um, causes a ton of problems so if you want to keep the water out dielectric grease is a good use for that there's also a seal or gasket on the connector and make sure that's there as well you could purchase those on eBay if you lost yours. I'm going to put dielectric grease in all of my coils. When you replace the coils, you want to make sure you replace the coil back into the cylinder that you took it out of. Um, it's not the, the worst thing you forget. Like, oh, I put them in a mound. I don't know which one was which. It's not the worst thing. But if you're trying to follow a code or if you think one of these coils is bad, it's going to be a lot easier to chase that issue. If you put the spark plug coil or put the coil back onto the same spark plug, when you reinstall your coils, you just want to push them straight down. Wiggle them a little bit. Make sure that you got a good connection onto your spark plug. That doesn't take too much oomph. You don't want to break anything. Just we get a nice little pop. Tighten these down. The torque specifications on these are the same as the engine cover. And really, really light. But given the thread size on these and the aluminum valve cover, I guess it's what you need. And that is where to go. Seven foot pounds, 80 inch pounds is what it calls for. So that's about seven foot pounds. Or just nice and snug tight if you're using like a palm ratchet or something. I wouldn't tighten these down with a bigger wrench at all. If you were to have a shop perform something like this, in our area, these spark plugs uh, cost me about $12 a piece. That's for the laser iridiums. Uh, at a shop, I would expect to probably pay about $18 to $19 a piece. And then... Labor time, probably about an hour and a half, honestly. So out the door, I would expect 200-ish, maybe, uh, for a job like this. Or if you do it at home, like I did here, and these spark plugs, again, about 12 bucks a piece. Uh, if you're going to get dielectric grease, that's going to add a couple bucks. Um, so it's not bad. It was about 45, 50 bucks to out, be out the door uh, with tax and everything to get this job done. And it took me under an hour to do, but I have all the tools set aside, and I had a good fairly good idea of what needs to be done or how it was going to be done i didn't torque them down i just went snug tight you could see nothing tight at all i didn't use any type of uh, leverage just at my palm that's it seven foot pounds again now this has the connectors broken on the coil so Instead of taking the connector off of each one and reconnecting it like this, that's why I kept everything together. So I only have to replace one connection. You could get pigtails and replace those to get the proper connection, 
or you could do something like this and Mickey Mouse it just to keep a good connection on it. You don't want any water getting in. You don't want vibration happening and making the connector fall apart. So I use three zip ties. I put one zip tie around the coil itself right there. Another zip tie around the connector at the base of the plastic part, not around the wires. And then I'll run a zip tie between those two. So tighten up the coil first and then tighten up the connector. This is after you made your connection and then tighten up the top one just to make it so it won't vibrate apart. All you need to do is get the engine cover put on from here on out. Hopefully this helps you clear a code like a 301, 302, P0303, P0304, and whatnot. When you tighten down your engine cover bolts, those are also torqued down to 7 foot-pounds or 80 inch-pounds. Hopefully this video helped you get your vehicle maintenance completed or uh, give you some uh, tips or just the extra know-how that you needed to get it done. One of these two videos right here might help you out as well. If they don't, it might help your neighbor or your friend. So please make sure you tell everybody about me. I have a ton of videos on maintaining your vehicle. When you start taking care of your vehicle, you start gaining a different pride in your vehicle, like gaining pride in your ride. So I recommend it. And a paid-off vehicle is amazing. It, you take care of a paid-off vehicle much different. So if you make your vehicle last a long time, uh, it's, it's way better for you. Like, subscribe, and share. If you have questions, comment below. I'll get to you as soon as I can. Or you could even give me a call. Shoot me a text, 925-418-5096. Hit me up on scottyshobbies.com or comment on a video. I'll see you in the next hopefully health video.